Hey guys, it's Molly Pop, and for today's video, I'm going to be showing you 35 of my favorite tips for your first year in Stardew Valley. I wish that I had known a lot of these things before I started my first year in Stardew Valley because it would have saved me so much time. But here's to hoping that I will save you guys some time with this video, so I hope you enjoy it. Now number one on our list of tips are birthdays. Make sure you always check the bulletin board for the birthdays of the season because you can give them a present on their birthday and it gives you a lot of friendship points. And if you've already given them two gifts in that week, it doesn't matter, you can still give them a gift on their birthday. Tip number two are the worms that you can find all over town. Now I don't think they're really worms, they're called artifact spots, but they wiggle like worms and they're right here in front of me in this pathway and you can find so many things with them just by digging it with your hoe. You can find books for the museum, artifacts, clay, coal, and that actually brings me to tip number three. You can find ancient seeds in these artifact spots as well, which you can bring to the museum and it will give you a rare recipe. But now tip number four, which has, has saved me many times, is to turn on the always show tool hit location. And I'm pretty sure it'll save you too because I would always water the wrong plant or the same plant over and over again because I didn't know where I was, uh, where my tool was. So when you put this on, it'll show you a red square where you, you can grab things or where you can use your tools so that, unlike me, you won't water the same plant five times because you don't know where you're watering. <laughs> Moving on to tip number five is don't leave your tool on while you're walking around town because if you accidentally hit the button and swing your tool, then your energy is going to go down and it's going to go down a lot. So this has saved me a lot once I figured that out. And energy is precious, so we don't want to waste it especially in the mines. But now, tip number six is a big one that I didn't know for a long time, but it is to watch TV. And it will tell you the weather report so you can see if it'll rain the next day, which is important because then you'll know you don't have to water your plants, or you can upgrade your weapon, which I will get to later. But another thing you can do by watching TV is see how the luck will be. If there will be lots of luck, if it's neutral, or if you're going to have bad luck all day, which is going to be very important for some tips later on in the list. But the last thing that you can do on TV is watch Living Off the Land because this channel will tell you recipes that will be very useful later on and they also tell you some tips as well so this is a big thing that will help you in the game now tip number seven is a big one and it is to get your crops as soon as possible preferably on the first day of the season and that's especially important on your first day of the farm of your first year because you're gonna need to get your crops started especially for the community center and a few quests that you will do later on but the most important thing is to not only get your crops that first day but to also plant all of them and water them and the crops that I like the most are the ones that will keep producing 
even after they've are you've already harvested it for the first time because not all crops will keep producing like the cauliflower doesn't the parsnip doesn't but the potatoes the beans and a few others in the other seasons will keep producing which gives you a steady income for the entire season next up is tip number eight and that is to get a backpack as soon as you have the money because it will give you more inventory space and it gives you this one gives you 24 slots and then there's another upgrade that will give you 36 slots and inventory is super precious especially when you're mining you're gonna need it so the backpack upgrade is essential and it will save you a lot of time in the long run tip number nine is not the most important but it will save you some time if you don't like waiting but tip number nine is to build your friendship with Marnie like as soon as possible and I believe I usually use an egg so try to get chickens I, I know she likes some other things but uh, though that's just what I remember but you will need t her friendship points in order to finish a quest it will save you a lot of time if you start building the friendship now because you do need at least two hearts in order to finish this quest but now tip number 10 is a big one it'll help you with your income and that is to clear out the town uh, for foraging so that means just clearing out the the leaves the wood the trees uh, because when all of that is out of the way it will leave a lot more space to pick up foraging items like uh, the daffodil I just got and foraging can be a big source of income especially in the winter time which is important because you don't have crops in the winter time so this has helped me a lot but it definitely is a lot of work especially down in the forest area like over by where the wizard's tower is so just make sure you uh, keep your energy up and clear as much as you can but only if you're a big forager but if you have other sources of income then don't worry about it next up is another tip that will save you some time especially if you're over by the mines area or fishing over by the mountain lake or this river and that is this little hidden shortcut right in this pathway right here and you still gotta leave some time uh, before you pass out at 2 a.m but it does save you a lot more time than having to go all the way down from the mines through town and then all the way down that long pathway whereas this pathway is way shorter and takes a lot less time and it has saved me from passing out uh, before I got to my bed at 1.52 a.m. <laughs> And that's a big lifesaver because sometimes you gotta pay money if, or you lose your items when you pass out and we don't want that to happen. Okay, tip number 12 is a big one and has saved me and I wish, I wish so bad that I knew this in my first year, but it is to not scythe all of this grass until you have a silo which is my tip number 13 get a silo as soon as possible but back to tip number 12 do not scythe all of your grass until you have a silo because the grass can be turned into hay which you will definitely need especially in the winter when you can't grow that and don't be me and scythe all of your grass and then have to end up buying tons and tons of hay 
in your first winter, which by the way is very expensive. Just make sure you do scythe your grass right before winter, like scythe all of it so you have all of it in your silo or silos. And I usually have two silos just because throughout all the season the gray, or not the gray, the grass piles up and so you might need more room because I believe each silo only holds 240 pieces of hay I believe. So just be cautious of that. Tip number 14 is to build a chest as soon as you can, and I believe you need 50 pieces of wood, but you already don't have that much inventory, you only have 12 slots, and you're going to be getting a lot of items, so you're going to need a chest, and probably multiple chests, which you can label and make different colors as well. Tip number 15 is especially important if you're trying to build relationships and that is to not look through the trash when NPCs are around you because as you can see they will think that's gross and it has a negative effect on them and will make their hearts, heart points, go down. So. It's important, especially when you want all the friendship points that you can get. Tip number 16 is to not make the mistake of thinking that you can make it home before 1.50 a.m. and then end up passing out because you didn't make it. And now I have a mod on that lets me stay up all night. But I can't even count the amount of times where I thought I could make it home, but I didn't, and I ended up passing out and had to pay money because a medical team rescued me or somebody found me and stole some of my items. So make sure you give yourself at least an hour or an hour and a half, depending where you are, in Stardew time to make it home because otherwise <laughs> you're gonna pay more than if you just left earlier. Tip number 17 is to not join the Joja Mart membership because it's either that or you do the whole community center bundles and doing the bundles is way more fun than the Joja member membership because you don't even get to do anything. All you do is pay 5,000 gold and that's it. And then the community center ends up being turned into a Joja Mart warehouse and then you get a vending machine that gives you Joja Cola, which everybody hates except uh, one person, I don't remember who it is, I feel like it's Sam, but I don't remember, but everybody hates it and they're worth like nothing anyways. And then the company just sucks, so the community center way is way more fun and a lot more re rewarding as well. Next up is tip number 18, and that is to always check the bulletin board for the help wanted because you can make a lot of gold through here by just giving the townspeople uh, items that they need. Which brings me to tip number 19, to keep some of the items that you forage, you fish, or some of your crops because you'll need it for some of these quests. And now tip number 20 with that is also, sometimes you will be asked to uh, gather wood for Robin or some iron, copper ore for Clint. And the most important thing to know about that is if you already have it, you can't give it to them. It has to be fresh ore or wood or whatever it is, otherwise they won't accept it. Which means the day you get that quest, that's the day you need to go out and get whatever item it is that they want. So just 
take an account for that and prepare for it because it will take time if you can't find it especially for iron or copper you don't always get those in the same day tip number 21 is to not sell all of your seeds like your maple seeds the random seeds acorns pine cones uh, because you can grow things with these seeds like plants uh, and sometimes trees and also you can make field snacks with acorns maple seeds and pine cones which is pretty cheap to make and easy and you can bring a bunch of field snacks into the mines and it will keep your health and energy up which is important especially in the mines when you're there all day tip number 22 is to pet your animals every single day because then their relationship points will go up and they will love you a lot more which will give you better eggs and eventually bigger eggs which you will need especially in the community bundles and don't forget to refill their hay if you don't have an automatic feeder tip number 23 is an important one and that is to be nice to Linus because he deserves it and he will give you some great recipes and he's just trying to live his life and he's a great friend. Especially be nice to him in the first scene because if you're not nice to him then you're heartless <laughs> because Linus is the best and he deserves your kindness. So there you have it, the most important tip of all. Tip number 24 is that when you reach eight hearts with the marriage candidates, you can give each and every one of them a bouquet and you can get bouquets at Pierre's store. So when you hit eight hearts with them, you can give them a bouquet and then they will turn into your girlfriend or boyfriend and then you can go on to see the scene with that person see I have eight hearts with Sebastian and Abigail and so I'm gonna go and give Abigail a bouquet and then I'm gonna give Sebastian a bouquet and they will both say girlfriend and boyfriend but they won't be mad at you for giving them both a bouquet and it won't have any negative effects on your relationships with them so you won't lose friendship points or romantic points but also this allows you to see every single 10 heart scene with everyone that you are able to marry and I do recommend looking at all of the scenes because the creator made them pretty special and they are worth looking at. Tip number 25 is when Demetrius visits you and asks you if you want a bat cave or a mushroom cave, choose the mushroom cave because the bat one is terrible you barely get anything from it but if you choose the mushroom cave then you will get mushrooms every two days and you can sell those in the the box and a lot of those mushrooms you can use in community bundles and will also need for some future quests Tip number 26 is to save all the gold quality items you get and a variety also because there will be an event in the fall that's called the Stardew Valley Fair where you put 9 items on display 
and it's very unlikely that you win in your first year, but having all gold items of different kinds of items will help you a lot to at least get second place, which you in return then get star tokens and can buy stuff with it. But if you do happen to get purple star items, which are legendary, then that will boost it as well, but I doubt you'll get those in the first year. Tip number 27 is to not overexert yourself when you're doing stuff throughout the day because if you overexert yourself, your speed will go down a ton. So if you're far away, like the mines, and you overexert yourself, you're gonna be very slow at this slow and if you're from the mines and it's getting late you might not make it home and then you'll pass out and then you'll have to pay money or lose items and on top of that the next day your energy will decrease a bunch because you overexerted yourself the previous day tip number 28 may seem silly to you but I didn't know this when I was in my first year and I probably should have but I did it just to be safe but you do not need to water your crops when it's raining so don't make the same stupid mistake I did I mean I had a feeling that I didn't need to but I, I was thinking that I couldn't really risk it and so I went and watered them anyway. So don't even bother wasting your energy on that. Tip number 29 is to upgrade certain tools when it's raining or during the winter. For example, your watering can because you're not going to have crops in the winter and you definitely don't need to water your plants when it's raining. And this brings me to tip number 30, which is to upgrade your axe as soon as possible so you can get into the secret woods. And the secret woods has plenty of foraging opportunities that you're gonna need for the community center. And they have fish that you'll need, as well as some other stuff. And I believe you do need to upgrade it to a steel axe, so try to get on that as soon as possible because it has some great benefits. Tip number 31 is to never mine on bad luck days only on days where it's good luck or at least neutral but never bad luck because on good luck days you're more likely to get lots of ore and treasures but on bad luck days you're gonna get almost nothing i did not know this for a very long time and i hope this guy this saves you from wasting entire days and energy mining and getting nothing but stone. Tip number 32 is to bring bombs with you into the mines because it will save you a lot of energy from using your pickaxe and the cherry bombs are a little too small so I like using the regular bombs versus also the mega bombs because the mega bombs are just way too big and the explosion gets a little wild. But with the regular bombs, the explosion is pretty decent. It has a, a nice radius. It'll get a lot of stuff out for you and all you need to craft it is iron ore and coal so it's not too bad. Tip number 33 is to always bring a ton of food with you into the mines and my favorite thing to bring are the fruits that you can forage during the spring, summer, and fall. Actually all of the seasons they always have some kind of fruit and you can bring like gather so many within one season and they do a decent amount for your health and your energy. And you can eat so many as I'm doing right now and still have a ton of fruit left over. Uh, the salmon berries and I think grapes and then there's one more I don't remember. 
You can always find them on the bushes and they're all over town so there's a lot and some of the recipes that have like a hundred something health and energy cost way too much to make as in the ingredients you need are hard to get. So this is a good substitute in my opinion. Tip number 34 is to not forget about the spring items that you will need for your community center bundle, like the foraging and the crops. There is also quality crops, but it's very unlikely that you're going to get all of the quality crops you need for spring in the first year. So just keep in mind if you don't want to wait a whole year to finish the spring foraging and crops bundle to get what you need as soon as possible. And that also brings me to tip number 35, which is to not stress about doing the community center bundles as fast as you can. Because this is honestly one of my favorite parts of about the game. It's great having to look for stuff and strive for it because a lot of these items you gotta work for and I just think it's a big part of the game. There are also going to be a lot of fish you're gonna have to get in different areas, different seasons, different weather. So that's going to be a little harder to do in, in your first spring season of the year, um, but it's good to get started. But that is all for my 35 tips for your first year in Stardew Valley. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope that I am saving you guys some time because I know that I definitely wish I knew a ton of these when I started my first year of Stardew Valley because honestly it would have saved me so much time but I mean <laughs> I guess it's part of the game when you're making these mistakes. But if you guys liked this video then please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, then hit that subscribe button. See you next time.